I was about to introduce the next speaker as myself, but I don't need to do that now. Thank you. Uh, I have 10 minutes, so you're going to need to listen very quickly. I'll, I'll do my best to get it all out there, and I'll do my best to get it out there without having it in front of me. I brought my laptop here. I think we'll be fine. So um, this is an update on some work the Council for Research Excellence is doing cross-platform. Uh, just as a reminder, now it was said earlier that SIM is the only organization out there devoted to improving audience measurement. Not quite true. The Council for Research Excellence has been out there for a while. There we go. It was established in 2005 to identify important questions about audience measurement methodology. We focus on the methodology and to find through quality research answers to those questions. The Council provides the Nielsen Klein community a means to undertake research projects no one company could undertake on its own. Now, we are funded by Nielsen, for which we thank Nielsen, but we're wholly led, as Nielsen can assure you, by the clients who don't always see eye to eye with Nielsen, but we work pretty well together. There are the members, many overlapping with Tim, many of the people in the room. It's a broad industry group, agencies, advertisers, this one, that one, trade associations. And there's some seats available in the council. We're currently including radio, or audio, as it's now part of the Nielsen Klein community. So uh, we're expanding there. I have uh, three studies that I'm just going to give top line to that we're doing, which are cross-platform. There are uh, some other studies there. First, just let me mention the social TV study. I see Beth Rockwood here. Beth has been leading that from Discovery. We presented out uh, a couple weeks ago the impact of social media on TV. It was brought up here. Um, we'll be providing some more data on that, a Bayesian analysis of the results, where we look at what is the impact of social on TV viewing. There are three studies cross-platform, a longitudinal ethnography, which I'll describe, an acceleration ethnography, which I'll describe, and a cross-platform, a white paper aligning metrics cross-platform. You seem to be listening pretty quickly, so I think we're doing fine. Two other studies that uh, I won't be speaking to, but I want to mention we're doing a big data primer. Stacy Shulman from the TVB has been working providing text so that people who are not data geeks and data scientists like that can begin entering that conversation. We look to have that out in June. And Jane did ask me to mention the marketing mix modeling that Dave Poltrack has led, working with Jim Spaeth's super partner, Alice Sylvester. I saw Alice here earlier. And we are looking to go back to do some more. It's not yet been funded by the council. We'll put out an announcement when it is, but it's a critically important area in the industry. And so we're on the case, and we'll let you know. OK. Looks good. The, uh, Longitudinal ethnography, and this is the first time the CRE has done any ethnographic research. A number of years ago, we did something called the Video Consumer Mapping Study, which was observational, but not really ethnography. We reached out, and we're working with GFK. I saw Dave Tice here. Um, they're the research associates doing the research. The purpose of the study is to gain a deeper understanding of interactions between devices, platforms, locations, and viewing dynamics from a cultural perspective. It's Anthropology, culture, perspective, that's what we do. It's not a sample, and we need to remind people on the CRE it's not a sample, but it is 100 representative households, eight markets, so it's kind of like a sample, but it's not. And um, the, the research questions we're looking at, and I'm actually going to have some findings that I'm going to share from that, but how does the viewing of video differ by device inside and outside the connected home? How do the many dimensions of viewing variables interact? It's pretty complex, as we've seen with all the intersecting matrices. And again, we're not quantitative in this study, but there are insights to be had. The timing, we started last October. It's a two-year longitudinal study, so we'll be able to see some changes over time. The initial findings uh, will be reported out this fall at the uh, TMRE, the market research event at uh, in Boca Raton, so we'll have a full report out there. I'm working with two different devices here. I feel like Artie. Artie has 13. I'm catching up. OK. Good. The acceleration ethnography. Acceleration was a technique the CRE used back when we did the VCM study, where the problem or one of the issues with new technology is that the early adopters are different from the early majority. The early adopters, who are a smaller number of individuals, will buy no matter the price. The early majority needs to have a price incentive in order to move, so they wait until the price comes down. What we did in the VCM study and what we're doing now in this ethnography, also being done by GFK, by the way, is uh, 
providing half the fee for households to get new technology. So it's as if the price has come down for them on that technology. We're doing it in Chicago in 50 households. And the purpose is to anticipate the effects of new media technology adoption on media consumption and the implications these may have for measurement. Good. Research questions here is what is motivating the selection and purchase of new viewing technologies and services? And what are new viewing patterns, what new viewing patterns are arising? We began in November, we just came out of the field. Despite what that says, we did not issue the findings at the time we started the study, which would have been November of 2013. We're just issuing the findings, they'll be issued this June. And I'm gonna share them with you, because Jane said we want findings, so you get findings. Unfortunately, we have not really had time to digest all these findings, but you're gonna learn what we're learning as we're learning it, right? And here are the sort of top line, and again, I thank GFK for getting these to us quickly and cleanly. Uh, consumer sophistication with devices and platforms across all household types is higher than anticipated. Much of this we're learning, we've already been speaking of throughout the day, consumers are ahead of us. They're smarter than we think they are. And we're finding that. Children and teens are influencing technology purchases and content uh, consumption. Content is driving decisions about tech solutions. People want to watch what they want, when they want it, how they want it. Decisions about new technology purchases are being influenced by the ability to stream content. Lots of content streaming. We know, we know much of this. There's a richness that we're getting that's not displayed here. These are our top line findings, more to come. Where, when, and how content is consumed often results from negotiations amongst multiple household members. I took this as a nice irony with all the technology in the household, people are talking more to each other, if only to fight over what they're gonna watch and where they're gonna watch it. With more devices and platforms available, people are discovering more content through personal referrals, social media, and their own growing expectations. As I mentioned, we'll have more on the social media when we get the final uh, report out from our social media study. Simultaneous multi-screen use is common. We're uncovering the whys. And I don't have the whys today, we will. Multiple viewing approaches have been observed across all household types. And by viewing approaches, we mean time-based, binging, marathoning, sampling, et cetera. It's not just the high-tech household. It's not just the high-income household. It's not just the young household. It's being found throughout. The growing accessibility of free Wi-Fi and hotspots appears to be stimulating more mobile viewing outside of the home, which means there's more unmeasured viewing that we're going to need to capture. And then finally, YouTube is emerging as a viewing option for programming beyond amateur videos and it's widely consumed regardless of household type or demographics. It's not just for your pet kitty anymore. The third study, and again, these are all dealing with the consumer. These are not quantitative studies dealing with the what, it's dealing with the why and the how. And the idea for this study, with our associate here is Horowitz Associates working with us, is to explicate the issues in aligning cross-platform metrics so as to guide the development of CRE research agenda. By the way, I just want to take a moment and acknowledge uh, Jane and Charlene for that matrix we saw of four different cross-media platform types and a number of different measures. Look, that's not an easy thing to put together, and uh, I'll make use of that in my teaching role. It's very valuable and cleanly done. But we need somehow to combine these different metrics from these different elements of the platform for the media planner to know what weight do I put on each of this. The methodology is we've reviewed some literature, including a wonderful study Sim did in 2011, which we're looking to update, looking at best practices in the area. Then we're going to go out, talk to 30 people, probably some people in this room, to um, uh, answer those questions. And then we'll come back with a white paper. The timing. Uh, the, the questions are how can we align these metrics and how can we align the media impact? And we'll look to put the report out in the summer. The purpose of this is for CRE to define its research agenda in this area. So we do research on research. This is doing research on research on research, which is probably as recursive as we want to get. One final word here. This is the first time CRE has been at the SIM event, and I thank you for having us here and letting, letting us share. And there is an alphabet soup of industry research groups. SIM, CRE, MRC, IAB, ANA, 4As, CTAM, blah, 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 right? And while we're not directly competing like a zero-sum game, there, are, there is a competition for your time and attention with all this activities. And that's not even a financial consideration, just a 
extension consideration. And here's a hierarchy I'm proposing that there's a certain level where we do have certain rival interests, if only for time. There's a higher level to work together, which is cooperation, where there are shared interests, and we have shared interests. There's a higher level yet, which is coordination, where there are shared actions. And then there's a kumbaya level that I don't even hope to get to right away, which is about collaboration, where there's shared vision. So in that regard, I'm putting forth a proposal, and I see my time's up, so I'll do it quickly, is I'm encouraging Gail Fugit, who's here, who's been great in the ARF, to move forward with their efforts. They've been talking about a council on councils, which would be a great opportunity so we know what this one's doing, not duplicating what that one's doing. And uh, at the very least, <coughs> a shared calendar so we don't step on each other's toes for meetings. We don't have that now. And then finally, an offer in the spirit of sharing and candor and openness. CRE events in the past have been open only to Nielsen clients. Nielsen funds the CRE and it's the ground rule. But we are opening the, the webinars on the three studies I described to anyone here today. So if you want to make sure you're included in the webinar, you can give me a business card or you can send me an email, I'm findable, or just send an email to info at Research Excellence and we'll make sure you get invited there. Again, we're reporting out on the acceleration in June, the, the second acceleration will be in the fall, and then the white paper. So thank you, Jane. I think I kept within my time pretty well.